Well, you know, Concrete, I would really have a rough time keying my mic to anybody in radio world if I was out here every day claiming I'm delivering truth and justice. And uh, every word that came out of his mouth was has been a proven outright lie. Most doubtedly, um, most of it by his own admission as it being a lie. And now that he figures out that he's at the point where Richie politely told him, hey, yo, dog, it's going to end like this. And he's at that point, and it's terrifying him, dog. Just look in the mirror and say, I'm worse than a three-time loser. And Mike, Mike, you were not supposed to let him know about mommy's photo going up till the next time he's proud of the shown face on Channel 19. He hasn't keyed up on 19 in over a week and a half, two weeks is truth and justice. So, you know, the next 19 appearance he does, that's when her pictures go up. I'm sorry about that, Rich. I thought he knew. Nah, he's on the way. He's in the fucking dark. Like, like he's trying to wonder how I could spit out his exact dialogue and what happened transpired in Bob's. I guess he's just unaware the crew he's up against. How many times I tell him, yo, your team against mine, a world like scrimmage. You know, instead of saying, look, you know what, Richie, I'm sorry, Mike Action, not gonna bother with you no more. No, he continues to threaten. He continues to fight the losing battle. And I don't give him credit for it because it's stupid. There's a three knockdown rule in this bout and you've been knocked down two times and you're going to be going down for the third time very soon very very soon ask mantis mr garcet but oh, you don't know either huh okay tick tock tick tock tick tock we already got you thrown out of your house and you still want to fight? And you got a head on your shoulders? You still threatening me and Richie? Yeah, that's real smart. That's smart. You're a real fart smeller. Hey Mike, stage three is gonna be hilarious in the last less than 30 days because he's having lots of problems with that 350. He's running over there in that building, bro. He can't do shit in a farmer building. You know what I'm saying, bro? Especially when you call the super and you complain about television interference. Oh, Michael, let, let's all worship the Death Star in Stage 3 and let's see what color wizard wand he comes up with. Because I tell you, if we sit back... <laughs> uh, Mike, I, like I said, um, somebody out here royally messed up. My plan is what's the reason why this is working the way it is right now. Embarrassment, frustration, and loneliness will do a number. So, like I said, gee, pay me no mind list. Not even dare. No acknowledge, no interrupt, no interrupt, no, no words pertaining to embarrassment and frustration. I didn't hear any apology. I didn't hear any apology to you. I didn't hear any apology to me. You know, maybe that might have softened things up. But instead, he goes back to what doesn't work. You see, Rich, it's a common occurrence. Sometimes stupid people try hard with the way they're doing things. And if it doesn't work, they try even harder with the way they're doing things. And then when it doesn't work, they even try harder, harder, harder with the way they're doing things, and it still doesn't work. And they don't get it that they're digging themselves a big hole. Imagine when she opens up that envelope and finds out she's on YouTube, and it's written down it's because of her son. Oh, my.
Mike, all my years of law enforcement and all my experiences working undercover and all the maneuvers that I've made, I, you know, it, it, all that experience and, and, and knowledge has taught me that he's just living out a true, and I mean a true, junkie trait. See, a junkie can never see that they're wrong, more or less admit that they're wrong. You know what I mean, Mike? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. He didn't learn his lesson with all the uh, private information. Still calling me names. You know, Birdman said he's going to tap me on the shoulder one day. You know what I think? I think I'm going to tap Enforcer on the shoulder one day. And he's not going to be as cocky because he ain't going to get a chance. And I can't wait for that day. My hands are itchy. I'm on the side. Nah, Mike, I got a better idea. Radio in the fight in New York City is going to explode. Radio in the tri-state area is going to explode. It's going to boom like no other once my account's on the freeze. And you know what's going to happen, Mike? These five or six, seven individuals in the big ocean around us these five or six individuals are going to be noted and labeled and felt by the rest of the fish as the plague. So basically, there's really no prosperity for them and there's really no radio future. The only thing they got is the dick they're holding on to and a microphone they think they can create chaos with. Other than that, it's a go-nowhere, dead-end situation for them. When they put the mic down, their life goes away. Nah, man, we ain't crying over anything, and yeah, Yankees are a good ball team. We just take care, care of New York City's true junkies and true bad radio element. Check out YouTube, NYC Radio Wars. Get your clown backwards ass up to date, and then come out here shooting your skip like we always do with a little bit of respect and manhood. Richie Clare. Love you too, DX Land. You're hole in the wall, New York CB shop stepping. I'm out of here, man. I'm getting in the car and I'm driving around 62nd Street. I'm gonna ring some doorbells. I'm gonna look around for some antennas. I gotta find out exactly where this kid is. I gotta stop him in his tracks. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not 62nd Street. The address is 60. The street is 2nd Avenue. 2nd Avenue? Okay. Hey, Mike. That, uh... That gizmo up there on that second shelf there with that little antenna on it and that little frequency counter in that gauge, you're probably going to need that. And uh, the best time to do it, Mike, I'm not going to lie, is somewhere between 5 and 6 in the morning when he's locking it up with me on 19 because he can't resist. Don't worry, Crazy Eddie will get him going. Oh well, the last man standing. What I tell him, what I tell him, I don't hear none of his cheerleader buddies out here backing him up, man. I guess they got to look in the mirror and realize the same thing. The motherfucker told us two years ago, and here we are at this point. Now what are we going to do? <laughs> I'll give you a good piece of advice. Sell all the radio equipment you've got, because you're done out here.
Tango got down. Five eight waving a hand, man. Eight two five eight waving it right back, man. I'm back quiet.